Uh, Councilmember Clark. Here. Councilmember Morgan. Here. Councilmember Peterson. Here. Vice Mayor Brooks. Here. And Mayor Brown. Here. Please join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. All right, do we have any additions or deletions to the agenda today? No, there's no changes to the agenda. Uh, okay, item three, any additional materials? Staff to distribute additional materials related to tonight's agenda. Today, staff uploaded a updated staff report, um, updated attachments, and presentation for the report. In addition, there were three emails received after publication of the agenda. All right, thank you. Move on to item four, oral communications by members of the public. This is the opportunity for members of the public to speak to the council on items that are not on today's agenda. Seeing none, we'll bring it back to staff and city council comments. Any comments from staff? None? Council? No? Council? No? All right. Uh, we'll move on to the business of the day. Uh, general government public hearings, item 6A, update on the wharf resiliency and public access project. And I'll turn it over to Jessica. Hi. Good afternoon, Mayor and Council members. Uh, the first few slides of the presentation are for a brief overview, just for the benefit of anybody who not may have tuned in over the past couple meetings. Um, so next slide, please. Um, so the current wharf resiliency and public access project is accumulation of many years of planning and uh, fund seeking and fund funding awards to uh, improve the resiliency in the future of the wharf. Key project elements are widening, widening the wharf, fixing um, and pilings and deck replacement, restroom addition to really ensure the wharf's long-term resilience. Uh, this was publicly bid last summer, and Cushman Contracting won the award for this project and started construction in September of 2023. Um, the remaining scope of the resiliency project, currently the widening portion of the project has been completed, and so has the um, installation of the restrooms at the base of the wharf. Uh, remaining to address is the buildings, their potential demolition, which we will speak to at length this evening, repairs to the head of the wharf, uh, items for the Capitola Wharf Enhancement Project, and then some other minor items related to the scope of the resiliency project, such as uh, plaque replacement, installing of the security gate, and improvements to the floating dock. Um, even with the work we're speaking about this evening, uh, project completion is still anticipated for fall of 2023. And then after the project's completed, there will be a future visioning for the wharf and a full public process to um, Look into the future and see what we want out on our facility. Next slide, please. Um, also, small recap of the building assessments. These were completed in January and February of this year when we had full access uh, because the uh, broken span had been repaired. Uh, the Wharf House restaurant is obviously in the most dire situation. It is currently a significant hazard. It has severe structural deficiencies. It's missing that seaward wall. Um, and myself and the building official and an outside uh, source have all confirmed that this building should be torn down. Next slide. Similarly, the boat and bait shop also has severe st structural deficiencies confirmed by an independent engineer and as we spoke about at the last meeting should also be demoed. Next slide, please. Um, so as a recap, the building demolition process is not just the removal of the building. It uh, starts with content removal. Uh, this past weekend, Boat and Bait was able to go out there and take the vast majority of the uh, contents in that building. We were working with them to receive, uh, for them to receive the rest of their contents that they were not able to get this weekend. Um, and then also content removal from the Wharf House, which is a little more complicated given the fact that that building isn't stable. But we are also working with the uh, proper uh, business owner there as well. Um, there are hazmat challenges. There's specifically asbestos in the Wharf House building, and then also um, some fuel issues associated with the boat and bait operations that all have to be taken care of in a special manner. Then there's the building demolition itself. Uh, staff is in the process of getting emergency permits to do this work. We anticipate to have them next week. Um, there's really the inability to use your typical heavy equipment just due to um, weight restrictions on the wharf. Um, so while you would typically get a very large crane and a 
one of those giant bowls that you see on TV to like knock down a building. You can't really do that on the wharf. You don't want things going into the ocean. Um, it really just can't handle that weight. So it really will be reliance on manual labor versus mechanical labor to do this demolition. Um, and then also the debris management, similarly needing to use small vehicles to transport the debris from the buildings back to the base of the wharf into dumpsters. And then those dumpsters being continually turned over because that is a small staging space there with also residences. Next slide, please. Um, I think this is the last recap slide. So preserving these buildings really aren't feasible. Um, the extensive repair needed, particularly to the bait shop, would require lifting the building and then rebuilding the foundation. It's unlikely that that building would survive that process. And then even if it did, you would need to address all of the uh, non-compliance issues in the uh, current building code. So that associated high cost really makes it financially impractical to rebuild these buildings as they are. Uh, next slide. So at, our, at your meeting last Thursday night, um, we discussed these items, we discussed the funding gap. We did get a report that the $500,000 in the state budget is coming to us. We have filled out all that paperwork. However, the budget is still in a deficit as we'll go into in following slides. Uh, council directed staff to remove the Portland Loo, which was the small restroom facility to be between the buildings at the uh, head of the wharf for cost savings. And then explore alternative bids um, we had reported an estimated cost of about a million dollars for the demolition work, demolition being that whole slew of items that we described in a previous slide. Next slide. So the recommended approach for demo demoing these buildings in tandem with our ongoing project is to obtain these emergency permits, to initiate a change order with our on-site contractor who's already mobilized, has equipment and personnel out on the wharf, which is Cushman to execute the demolition of these buildings concurrently with the project so the project can continue moving on, also do the repairs under the building once they're, um, the buildings are demoed, and the duration of this work to be added to the work that we already have going on is six to eight weeks. Um, then again, yes, repairing the, uh, doing wharf repairs under the buildings, and then upon completion of that demolition, resuming the project and being complete this fall. Next slide, please. So this is the table that was included in your staff report. It's really quite detailed. I will go over this one line by line. Please feel free to ask questions. So there's many parts of this demolition cost that Cushman has to be involved with, kind of regardless of who does the demolition work. So the staging and coordination, as you know, the staging area for the wharf project is really small. It's limited to that parking area that's adjacent to residences. And this would be a significant different operation to what's currently being done, a demo is very different than obviously building a wharf. So it's supporting a different type of um, construction mechanism. Um, the next line creating access to the demolition operation is really getting all the equipment that you need from your staging area out to the site where the buildings are. So that area has not been completed yet with our wharf resiliency project. The decking hasn't been replaced. The structure under it hasn't been addressed. So really, I'm sorry, that's preparation of the demo site. So really getting the site prepared immediately there so it is safe and able to hold the load of everything you need to do the demo is preparation. The building site creating access is also spreading load across the whole span of the wharf. So to put out runners to get out to the site. So all of that would be something that Cushman would need to prepare. Um, under this quote, the bait shop demolition would be completed by Cushman Contracting, and then the hazard abatement, so the asbestos in the um, wharf house, and then the demolition of the wharf house would be done by a separate contractor. This allows both of the buildings to be addressed at one time and really reduces the amount of time that has to be extended to the end of this project. Other costs associated with the demolition is coordination uh, to continue the resiliency project, so obviously there are going to be a lot more people out there and more deliveries to schedule, trash to schedule, more um, coordination in general. Um, I can't see what that last line says. And then, mobiliz then mobilization costs. So basically getting that different equipment, different labor, different people to do that, those different actions. So the direct costs for Cushman to do the demo is approximately $660,000. Next slide, please. 
That's summarized a little bit easier to see here. So it's really the categories are site preparation, building demolition, project coordination because the wharf project is still going on, and the mobilization to do this additional work. Next slide, please. So in adding to the and, uh, current contract with Cushman, they are entitled to markup costs. This is very clearly part of the contract and part of any contract that's under the Caltrans specifications, which this one is. So the 20, 15, and 15% there are under Caltrans specs, under our current contract. Those are really non-negotiable figures. And then you have the increase of their bond and insurance because this is extra work that wasn't considered as part of their prime contract. So the total change order for the demo is $805,000, which is approximately $200,000 less than we had spoke about on Thursday. Next slide, please. So the alternative approach we explored was having another contract do or do all of the demo versus Cushman only doing one and the contractor doing one. So that would be Cushman still doing that preparation site work, but then Cushman would stop doing work while the demolition was going on. Cushman would be entitled to be paid for that holding time. And the estimated uh, duration of this based on the quote that we received from Coastwide Environmental is two to three months. Um, Cushman would then, after the demolition is complete, and that contractor would demobilize. Cushman would come and do the repairs underneath the where the structures once were, and then after that, resume the resiliency project. Next slide. So the direct cost for this, this was also in the uh, staff report. It's those, those same first items or the same uh, site prep that we had discussed before. Then you have the bait shop demolition, the hazard abatement, and the wharf house demolition. Um, and those are quotes from, again, Coastwide Environmental. And then the direct mobilization costs for Cushman, which are related to the work that they would be doing um, for a total direct cost of about $480,000. Next slide, please. Um, so this is the site preparation summary, building demolition, and mobilization. Next slide. So again, there's the markup on the work that Cushman would do. So it was not on the contractor work, but on that prep work Cushman would do. There's that same markup, same bond, same insurance. The real difference here, or a significant difference here, is the project delay cost. Um, based on the quote uh, that we received and also just talking with Cushman Contracting, the project delay is estimated to 40, 60 working days. $680,000 represents a a 40 working day delay. And so the total there is $1.25 million to engage in a separate contractor. Next slide. Um, lastly, um, an al another alternative approach would be to defer demolition at, of the buildings until the end of the resiliency project. That has multiple steps. These were also included in the staff report. I'm also doing immediate safety measures because we cannot leave the wharf house the way it is right now. Um, and then really what it comes down to is the resiliency project wouldn't be completed to its current scope because you just couldn't get close enough to the wharf house building to complete the project. Do you mind going back? Thank you. Um, Cushman would complete their amended scope and then we'd have to come back with new engineer plans and permits. Um, which would be a significant lift. We would have to re-engage our engineers. We would have to start over with the regulatory agencies. And they all have different conditions of when work can be completed. So even if we were ready to turn this around for bid in, say, two to three months, we would have to wait till the regulatory agencies permitting windows. Um, then we would rebid the project and then obviously mobilize a new contractor to complete the, pro complete the project. Next slide. Um, so really what this equates to is it would be approximately a year for this project to be finished. Obviously, the cost with re-permitting and engineering the project and with a new contractor. And then really a reduced economies of scale because obviously right now Cushman is driving mini piles or replacing all of the decking. This alternative project would be a much smaller project, so cost per unit would increase. And then cost escalation just because anytime you push out a project, it is always more. Next slide. Um, so the proposed contract change order for Cushman Contracting comes out to about $1.5 million. 
So that includes the building demolition, the work under the buildings, the repair to the head of the wharf from this most current storm damage. Um, it includes the credit for the Portman Loo, and then also includes some items for the Capitola Wharf Improvement Project uh, construction, mostly furniture, um, ordering, assembly, storage, and um, having this all be accumulate at the end of the project at one time. Um, so that would be for a total contract amount of about $9.8 million. The initial estimate for this whole project prior to any of the second storm damage that's happening and prior to knowing that we have to take out these buildings was $8.9 million. So we're in about 10% of that initial estimate, which is really, it's amazing to be completely honest, considering how much the scope has expanded to still be within 10% of the um, initial uh, estimate. Next slide. Um, the project budget includes a lot of funding from a lot of interested partners. So from the state and from the federal government sponsored by uh, Senator Laird and um, Congressman Panetta, um, Measure F approved by the voters, insurance, and uh, FEMA is still pending. And then of course the CWEP fundraising. So if you consider all of our project funding of 8.9 and then our current contract with Cushman, including their previous change orders and this new change order, we have a project deficit of about $369,000. Um, so this is just a side-by-side -side of um, the demolition options, I thought it might be a little easier to discuss when you have the numbers right next to each other. As you can see, the site preparation numbers are exactly the same. The building demolition numbers are the combined Cushman and a contractor versus just using a contractor. Obviously, there's no project coordination if the, pro the resiliency project isn't going on in the alternative one. Um, mobilization, again, is based off of Cushman's costs. And then you have the markups, bonds, insurance, and then for the second alternative where Cushman has ceased work, we have the project delay costs. Next slide, please. Um, so next step, um, assuming that we demo these uh, buildings, the anticipated project completion is in fall 2023, and then we start off a new process, engaging the public on the visioning and uh, interest to future development at the for the wharf as a whole. Um, the public can receive information on that ongoing effort by signing up on our city website. If you go on the next slide, you go to our main page, scroll all the way to the end. There's a place for email subscriptions, and when you click on that, you get the next page, and there is a specific line for Capitola Wharf Outreach. So that is our dedicated place to uh, get on that mailing list. Next slide, please. Also, our... Um, Clerk's team also does a very good job of putting all of this on our social media pages, so that is also somewhere to find that information as well. Um, so with that, this is the recommendation included in the staff report, and I am prepared to answer any questions you may have. Thank you. Uh, questions? We'll start at this end. Questions? Yeah, great job on getting those numbers down. It's, that's awesome. I'm glad to see that. But I would like to go back to the um, asterisk you had on there about the 313000 for CWIP with Cushman. So if I understand that the Planning Commission is still going to vote on that? Correct. So that is March 6th or 7th, whatever that Thursday is. And they will be approving the final, um, final design for that project. Yes. And so it's not to exceed the, that amount. But we don't have a, an, a bid or an estimate on that right now, do we? So this is an estimate on the project as um, will be presented to the Planning Commission. If they change it significantly, there is a potential that that number changes, yes. But this number as proposed is not to exceed. I think at one time we saw that CWEP had done a, a calculation that was quite a bit lower than that. But anybody recall that? So this number, and I, I'm sorry I don't have the breakdown for you, is the... Um, cost that we put when the, I believe it was our December meeting that we, you all um, allocated another $250,000 to that project and it had all of the breakdown of all the different components. And so this is the, all of the furniture components plus the estimated installation cost at that time. And that's, that number is a summation of those numbers from December. That's all I have for now. Thank you. 
Well, piggybacking off on that, um, I think we had talked about last meeting potentially not using Cushman for some of the installation, but did we decide that that, like, it would just be more work for us if we were going to do that, like, financially, or? That is still staff's recommendation. There is definitely a potential to take that, package it up, and bid it with a different contractor. Um, I will say that will make it more difficult to have it, both of those projects end at the same time. Right, okay, all right. I just wanted to clarify that. Thank you. That's all. Um, I, I just want to be clear that the CWEP funding is, has nothing to do with the funds that we're allocating for this additional project, right? CWEP has been allocated. There's fish shop designs and lights and benches and all of that. So what we're seeing here has, even though you're including the budgets just for presentation, we're not utilizing any of those funds for this um, additional change order. We're not using any of those dollars. They still get their $250,000 we allocated, and it is what it is, but it has nothing to do with. It's part of that project budget. Right. Yes. Okay. I just want to be clear about that. Um, and and so when I look at the $804,000 option one, and then the $1.2 million option two, option three Alternative three is just an unknown of extreme, like, extremely expensive option. We just couldn't put a number on it. Is that accurate to assume that? It would be really difficult to give you a straight face number for that right now, but I can assure you that it will be significantly more expensive than completing the project now. Got it. Um, and then can you just, because I'm, I don't, know anything about markups and you you've mentioned briefly that it's a non-negotiable can you just give me a brief definition of what markups are and why we can't i'm all about negotiations so i like sure having some flexibility here and if there's an opportunity or some begging and pleading that we can do to advocate for ourselves sure so julie if you could go to like slide 10 that would be helpful So for each of these items, the price per item is made up of different pieces. So one would be labor cost, one would be equipment cost, and the other one is subcontractor cost. There's also at times materials cost, but that's not something that's being proposed here. Um, so under the Caltrans 2018 standards, Section 8.105, um, you're allowed, <laughs> you're allowed, and that is reference, is part of our contract by reference, you're allowed to have markups for when you do additional work. And so the labor markup is, I'm sorry, 20%, the materials is 15%, materials and equipment is 15%, and then the subcontractor is also 15%. And the reason that's in the code is it allows for profit, basically, for the contractor. But that's something, right, that's in the contract by reference, not really negotiable at this point. Okay, and then I just want to confirm that we actually did receive a bid from Cushman 100% confirming that those markups are accurate and the $804,000 is, is on point. Is that true? Correct, eight hundred four eight eighty. Yeah, so we actually have the bid or the bid in place. Okay, um, and then my second question is just more looking forward because I know that's really important to the community. We know that these buildings need to be torn down. There's no such thing as a Band-Aid on, on either one of these um, buildings as an option. Um, moving forward, there was a, a couple sentences you had on there of involving the community in deciding what's to be next. Are we anticipating that in, you said fall of 2023, but I know you're talking about 2024 because that would Thank be you. amazing <laughs> that we had this done last year. But um, are we anticipating starting those conversations earlier than the ribbon cutting ceremony of fall 2024 and kickstarting that, or are we going to wait until after? So we're going to be talking about the council's goals for this next year coming up. I think it's in two weeks from today. And so I think that's kind of the opportunity for the council to weigh in on sort of what the priority is and where, where that process will fit. I think we've been thinking that the project that the community development department would lead so I think it's going to be kind of up to council's discretion about sort of where that project's going to fit in the overall priorities for community development. 
And and then just for clarity's sake, we're over budget by three hundred thousand dollars or so on the project. Can you just tell me a little bit about um, the true impact of that on our overall city budget? And you know, was this something we anticipated? I mean, we had anticipated the project being more, but we did not anticipate two horrible storms. Um, so can you just touch on that? And and I know we'll get into it in the goals, but I just know there's a lot of folks listening here about what this kind of how this impacts. Sure. Overall budget. So as the council will recall, prior to last meeting, we had about $2 million in fund balance that was made up of 500 k and sort of the buffer, fund balance buffer that we've used in the past, a little bit less than a million dollars the council set aside for a future infrastructure project. And then um, I think some additional cash that, that was available for use. We adjusted the budget this last week and took we needed to adjust the budget down by about 500K. So it took our sort of fund balance position down to about $1.5 million. So with this transfer, it's gonna approximately take our fund balance position down to, I think around $1.2 million. That's, that's fund balance. The city's reserves, both its emergency and contingency reserves, remain 100% funded. So the fund balance is the available cash that, that we have um, to use on any individual basis for any individual project. Does that help? It does. Um, I think what would be extra helpful is to talk about how that 1.2 million fund balance is in reference to Measure F. A lot of our um, our community anticipated funds from the Measure F to go to the wharf. Again, not anticipating two storms. We have our wonderful wharf project happening. This is above and beyond beyond that scope originally. So does that 1.2 million fund balance include Measure F dollars? Just, yeah, thanks. So, so no, the $1.2 million fund balance does not include Measure F. All of Measure F has been allocated to projects like the Jetty, the Wharf, um, I think the Beach Loader, the Flume. So all of the Measure F revenue that we've received during the pandemic year, we did allocate that year's revenue to public safety. But every other year, the money has come in and gone directly into those projects. So the allocation that we're requesting this evening would be general fund dollars. It's not Measure F. Right. Okay. And I'm just trying to think of the right words. When we originally started the WARF project, we had, um, like, the work we're going to do in step one and then step two. And what did we call that? That was phase, phases. So we, we're in phase one utilizing, and we're currently in phase one of the WARF rebuild. And no? That's not accurate. Well, we kind of have been calling it phase one, but if you recall, Steve brought forward a, a pre-phase uh, that we did before the storms, remember? We redid the um, steel pilings at the end of the war back, I think, in winter 2019. 2019, okay. Yeah. So in 2019 and pre-phase, we were allocating Measure F dollars. In phase one, we've been allocating Measure F dollars, and we obviously aren't into the next fiscal year yet to utilize new Measure F dollars but our budget meeting is going to be happening in a few weeks to, to talk about that with a $1.2 million fund balance. Um, okay, those are all my questions. Thank you. Yeah, I just had a question about the uh, FEMA reimbursements. Like, how much are we expecting? Or is there a timeline for that or any idea of, yeah, what we can expect? So FEMA is an ongoing process. I will say they balance it against excuse me, your insurance payouts, so you don't you don't double dip. I will also say that our past storms here in December of 2023 have a statewide emergency. So not a federal emergency, but a statewide emergency associated with it. And we have a applicant's briefing for that at the end of next week. So there's also potentially funding there for specific damages from this past winter. Um, it takes a very long time to get money from FEMA. <laughs> it takes a little less time to get money from the state from emergency purposes. So I wouldn't count on having money in hand from for that for probably at least another year. Do you have like a, rough, a rough estimate of how much we can expect in approximately a year or two? If they fully reimbursed our costs, which they may or may not, um, I would say a maximum of about eight hundred fifty thousand dollars, and probably at least six hundred. But that that's kind of based on still being in the middle of the process. So when FEMA comes in, we'll actually be under budget by around three hundred, <laughs> right? 
I think that that's a positive. I mean, it, it's it's possible. Half full. It's possible. I mean, I don't know if you just saw the county just had to make an announcement that a lot of their COVID funding was denied from FEMA. Mm. <laughs> um, so there can be twists and turns in the FEMA reimbursement process. And this, as, as Director Khan said, this most recent disaster in December um, wasn't declared a FEMA dis disaster. So there's a lot of different nuances to it, but we do have some great allies um, in FEMA who've been supporting the city. And, you know, I think if we can work well with them, that there is definitely a chance for a significant reimbursement here. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so I have just a, a couple questions. So first, it's, um, I am happy to see that between Thursday when our overall projected project deficit was $1.2 million and now it's 369,000, that's phenomenal. Um, I know I, I'm seeing that the uh, demolition costs themselves going from about a million to 805,000. I see that that, that 200,000 uh, difference is from our removal of the Portland blue, but the overall um, bid change went from 1.9 to 1.5, and that's a $400,000 difference. So where'd the other 200,000? Did you just find some cost savings there or? So the 200,000 is from the Portland Blue, yeah. as you referenced. And then the placeholder for the demo at the last council meeting was a million dollars. We got a more refined bid and kind of a more refined scope. And so now that is projected at 805. Great, great, okay. Um, and then just to, to go to the question of uh, Council Member Clark brought up, so the $313,000 um, change order for the CWEB things, that'll go to the Planning Commission. And so if we if we approve that today and not to exceed 313000 if it goes to the Planning Commission and they somehow find some cost savings, it's, the answer won't be, Council already said we could spend three three thirteen, right? And then if it somehow becomes more, it would need to come back to us? Okay. Um, so this is more of an authorization of up to how much you can spend. It's not an approval of the bid change itself right now. It's an approval. It's an authorization for you to make a bid change of up to 313000 But the Planning Commission still needs to look at that first. Right, based on the outcomes of the Planning Commission meeting on the 7th, correct? Okay. Um, so as long as it's 313 or under, there's no difference between us approving this now and it going to the Planning Commission or it going to the Planning Commission and then us approving it, it's the same outcome. Okay. Um, what does the next month look like? So I, I know we're kind of looking at timelines and six to eight weeks for this and two to three months for that, but just looking at a, at a linear timeline from here to, let's say, April 1st, the next month, when are people going to start seeing buildings come down if, if we approve this today? So the intent would be to be out there on March 11th. So the um, abatement of the wharf house would have to be shored up and abated. So that would be the first step of that. And then if we go with the staff recommendation, they would both be coming down at the same time. So the first visual would probably be the boat bait. And that would be on March 11th or that would be... If March 11th is the abatement, how long does that take? I'm just trying to get a sense of when we might want to warn people. It's going to be visually jarring, I think. And I'm, I'm just trying to get an idea of when we might want to let people know to expect that. Um, and if we don't have that answer now, that's fine. But um, if at some point we could get some kind of timeline of when we can expect that people are actually going to start seeing buildings come down. You can definitely pray that. Thank you. Um, Okay, yeah, and then, yeah, when, when we can expect to see that start and then when we might expect to see it done. There's no more buildings there um, on, the, on the skyline. Um, okay, I think those were my questions. Any additional questions from council? Yeah, go ahead. I, I want to bounce off of that a little bit because you're absolutely point on or spot on about the, um, the buildings coming down. And are we going to have our... Historian Deborah, I was like looking, I was pulling all of your thoughts there. Deborah, go out and take photos. Do we have anything ceremonial in place or something that we can um, get some um, historical footage on, on that for our museum and such? So we have incredibly good documentation right now of the actual building interiors and the current, current situation. Yeah. It's like we have, like you can do Google view, move through the buildings with the photos. I think we can 
uh, tap into Deborah and probably during the demo process, I think mm -hmm. a little bit of photo documentation is probably in order. And maybe something from the business owners if they want to um, donate anything to the city or if we can get some photos. I know that they've been out there cleaning things up. I'm just thinking for documentation. And I don't know if there's anything the city can do in terms of ceremonial kind of goodbye to the buildings. It makes me really sad. Um, but if there's anything by March 11th that we can all do to be there close by to, to be there with the community. So just food for thought and we can talk to the mayor about it offline. Or uh, golden crowbars, <laughs> what you're thinking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, I'd love to be out there with, with the folks, so thanks. All right, uh, with that, we'll bring this item out to public comment. Uh, if anyone has any comments on this item, please uh, feel free to step up to the podium and state your name if you'd like it recorded in the minutes. Seeing none. All right, we will bring this back to council um, for discussion. Um, yeah, I have some comments, but I'll, I'll save them for the end. Any comments? Yeah, I'd like to just say how good it was to see the community involvement. Um, a lot of great ideas came f with people in their emails. And we talked about a lot of things, but uh, truly it's, it's just a community thing and that we were able to bring, bring it all together and hopefully we can get to that next point and then um, get the wharf built back better. And then hopefully we can get our buildings, our, the restaurants and the bait and boat. So that's what I would love to see. and. Uh, I'm glad we're moving forward. Yeah, um, I think that in a way we've sort of entered a, a good position to be able to get underneath those buildings that we wouldn't necessarily have been dealing with um, to strengthen things up for the wharf. And um, after all, this is what this project is about. It's about the wharf. And so I'm happy to see that we can do some steps and not lose a ton of time on the project. I think that's important to a lot of people as well. Um, so yeah, I, I definitely wanna echo what Joe said. Um, thank you for the community. Thank you for Public Works for doing all this work that I know it's been weighing heavy on everybody. So um, I look forward to what we can look forward to. Thanks. Yeah, I guess I just want to say thanks for taking the time to make sure that we, you know, did this process right with the assessment and the bids and that it's unfortunate that these buildings have to come down, but I'm looking forward to the visioning process and getting more businesses back on the wharf and hopefully they will be a little more resilient to uh, future storms. Thank you. And I would just add that there's something special about what we see in the room this evening, so I know folks can't see behind us, but our entire staff is here who have worked endlessly and will have to continue to work really hard because this project is far from completion. Well, not far. The light is at the end of the tunnel. But um, So I just really want to say thank you, and we don't get to see all of you late at night on our regular council meeting time, so thank you for, for being here, and thank you for um, being part of this journey with our community during these really, really hard times. So um, we thought January 20, what was that first storm, 22? I'm getting my years mixed up, that's how bad it is. We, this has been rough for, for all of us. So I know it's hard for the community and um, yeah. So, um, and thank you, Jessica, your expertise shines brightly through and your leadership really means a lot. So thank you and thank you to our city manager. Um, so the recommendation this afternoon, unless there's a we good? Okay. Um, is to approve change order five to public works agreement with Cushman contracting for wharf project and an amount not to exceed a lot of money, $1.5 million, and adopt a resolution amending the 23-24 adopted budget to allocate an amount not to exceed 369 for additional project expenditures. Um, has anything changed since that, since our conversation? I don't know. I think so, right? We're good with the CWEP stuff. Okay, so I'll go ahead and make a, a motion to adopt staff's recommendation this afternoon. I can second that. 
All right, we have a motion and a second for the sake of discussion. Uh, any further comments on this one? No, any further comments on this one? Okay, uh, I just wanna make a couple really quick comments. Um, as mentioned, thank you all for the community involvement. Uh, I know our, our hearts all kind of have collectively sunk in hearing that we were going to be losing these buildings. Um, and now we're, we're gonna move forward in a process together and what comes next. Um, I wanna thank you to our staff and to Jessica. We asked you for seconds of, second opinions, you offered them. We asked you for additional bids, you provided them. We needed breakdowns and you gave an incredible amount of detail. And I think um, it's really been beneficial for me personally to have all of this information to work with. And I think it's also a testament to your experience and your professionalism that every step of the way, the second opinions confirmed what you provided to us. And so I'm just grateful for you going above and beyond to give us that information to make these kind of really tough decisions. Um, I'm happy to see that the cost savings that we're looking at today has brought the change order down well below 15% to the kind of 10%. Um, that is also, I'm really glad to see that. I know that there's still some uneasiness about what comes next. Um, the, uh, you know, this is one of the first steps. I've been in conversations with the governor's administration about seeking funds for interim options and long-term process and procedure. We're hopeful that, that this will um, be of benefit to us as we move forward in this process. Um, in the meantime, uh, I think, we have a motion and a second. All right. Uh, we have a motion and a second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries unanimously. All right. Thank you, everyone. That brings us uh, to item seven, which is our adjournment. We'll adjourn to our next special city council meeting on March 6th at 6 p.m. Until then, take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. Have a good one.